Our problem is, is our kids are all going around teasing other children because, oh, look how fat they are. Oh, dog. And we're trying to teach them, oh, you got to eat right and, 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 and all this other stuff. Let me, let me ask you a question. We live in a world of preservatives. How can you eat right? I know how, Brother Mary. You go to McDonald's and order a Big Mac and a small order of fries because we're not going to order the big one. But wait a minute, we're going to pray, so let's supersize it. <laughs> and let's not only get a drink, but we'll get a shake to go along with it because we're going to pray. And when we pray, God's going to make it healthy for our body. <laughs> I don't even eat a salad from McDonald's. I don't recommend anybody eating over there except clowns. <laughs> for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God where's your labor at? is your labor because you trust in the living God I believe that the apostle Paul is in, in, inserting this thing in here because think about this he said this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation if we trust in the living God, why do we put so much effort on bodily exercise? Oh, I gotta be stronger, and, and that's okay. I'm, you know what I'm saying? But our our priority needs to be our thinking needs to be right, and and we need to prioritize it in the sense of where yes, I want to do it because I want to be healthy. I don't want to do it because I want to be seen. In other words, if, if you're trying to lose weight so you look better in your bathing suit, you're trying to lose weight for the wrong reason. Absolutely. Why? I, I don't think you ought to be running around in a bathing suit everywhere you go. Uh, you know, I, I think that there are certain things that we need to be careful of. The Bible said we're going to suffer reproach. We're going to labor because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, not just some of them. Isn't that amazing? The Bible said He's the Savior of all men. Not just those that believe, but He said especially of them that believe. Isn't that wonderful? You see, when, when everybody that dies without Christ, when they stand in the judgment seat, it'll be Christ that'll be judged because He's the Savior. And he's the he said, these things command and teach. What does that mean? He said, these things give in doctrine. These are your doctrines. These are the things we need to look at. He said, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. Notice what he said. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. In other words, don't just know what the Bible says about it. Put it into practice. Exercise it. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about the bodily exercise as much as we put forth the effort. No, let's not do that. Because <laughs> some of us don't put much effort in our exercise. <laughs> some of us might. You know, once you get into the routine of it, I know how it is. You know, you like, you sit there and you look at that weight bench or you look at that exercise machine and every day of your life, five or six times an hour, you look at that place, I need to get on that place. <laughs> If I get on that thing, if I can be on that thing for six weeks, buddy, I could have the true blue body. I could have, I could be slim and trim. And that's what we think. Boy, if I get that, if I buy that P90X thing, which costs $400. If I buy the P90X, buddy, I could be buff. I could have the, oh man, I could have the washboard hand. I mean, I could just walk around and just knock people over. You know what? You remember this. You buy the P90X, it comes in, you open it up, you put it in the TV and you watch it, then you put it back in the box and you put it on the cabinet next to the other stuff. <laughs> that you spent all kind of money on and you didn't use it. The reason why is because once you bought it and you slipped the DVD in there and you watched it, you realize that you actually have to get off of the couch. <laughs> for it to work. Oh, I thought I could just watch it and get up. If I sit down long enough to watch that, I'll be stiff. But it won't be from exercising. It'll be from being old. He said, be thou an example of the believer. In other words, don't wait for everybody else to do it. 
You know, what we should do. You say, well, Brother Max, should we eat right and look after it? Yeah, I think we should. But I don't think we ought to wait till Brother Wade walks in all slim and trim. How do you do it, Brother Wade? By eating right and exercising. Oh, now I'll do it. We need to be the leader. We need to be the example. Oh, but, but I'm, not a, I'm not a teacher and I'm not a preacher. It doesn't matter. You are a leader. Nobody has the right to stand, to stand up and say, well, I'm a follower. The Bible said you're an ambassador for Christ. You are a leader. You're leading somebody. Amen? That is true. You're leading someone. So the Bible said, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Now, when he said, till I come, give attendance to reading, I've heard a lot of preachers say, well, I'll tell you what, bless God, that means you need to be reading your Bible. Well, Paul wrote a letter to Timothy and said, give attendance to reading to a bunch of people that didn't have a Bible. So what does it really mean? You see, they didn't have a King James Bible. Paul is telling Timothy, when you get together and when you're preaching doctrine, he said, you read the Word of God. Because for some people, that's the only Word of God they get. It's a public reading. It's when they stand in the church, when they stand in the assembly. He said, you read that Word. He said, you make sure that what you're preaching is coming out of the Word. You make sure that your doctrine is backed up in the Word of God. That's what's wrong with some of these teachings that are going on. That's why there's a false spirit out there. That's why there's a false fire out there. That's why there's a bunch of counterfeit Jesuses out there. Is because people are preaching their own thing and they're not backing it up in the Word of God. If you come to church and you don't bring a Bible, shame on you. If you come to church and you bring a Bible that you don't read at home, double shame on you. If you bring a Bible to church and you don't at least try to practice some of the things that's in there, triple shame on you. Amen, preacher. I'm going to go set up an answer. Amen. So somebody on that camera will know somebody said amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> It's the truth. It's true. Look at what he said in verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Now the presbytery was a, a band of men that were leaders. They were qualified men. Uh, they were uh, certified ministers. They were those that were called by the Spirit of God. They got together with Timothy and they laid hands on him and they prayed on him and they passed the cloak, so to speak, to Timothy. The cloak of the ministry. Now, that doesn't just mean that this is just for the ministry. But it is for everybody that is saved. Why? Because uh, the minister is not higher than you are. Though God has given him a different position in the church, we're all on the same ground. And then he said, meditate upon these things Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. That means that when somebody hears you speak, you sound like a Christian. It's not about all the things we did and all the things we're going to do. It's not about this flesh. It's not about the exercise that we do. But are we exercising under godliness? Are we making forth the effort to let people realize, hey, what I got is real. And I'm going to prove it to you by being a Christian to you. And I'm going to know what I believe. I'm going to know why I believe it. And then he said, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now, let me read this to you real quick. He said, take heed unto thyself. To thyself. Our lives must be such as become ministers of God and preachers of righteousness. For the eyes of God and the whole world are upon us. The observing eye of God, the censorous and insidious eye of the world, who will charge the miscarriages of a single person upon the whole order 
and condemn all for the faults of one. Therefore, let everyone take heed unto himself. The honor and of our profession requires it. The conscience of our duty demands it. And due regard of the glory of God and our own reputation commands it. He said, take heed unto thy darkness, that it be the pure and uncor uncorrupted Word of God, expounded agreeably to the sense of the ancient church, and of our own church in particular, which has with the greatest care followed the ancient pattern. Many errors are abroad in the world, which have adulterated the truths of the gospel. It is therefore prudential and necessary that the ministers of God keep at a great distance from every opinion which looks like heretical and not to come within the reach of suspicion. It is not enough for us to be innocent unless we appear so. It's not enough for us to be innocent. We must appear innocent. The order of the words St. Paul bids Timothy first to take heed of his life and next to his doctrine, not first to his doctrine, then to his life. Take heed to thyself and to thy doctrine. Because the success of our doctrine depends on the goodness of our lives. It is this that must render our doctrine operative and effectual. This is the principal thing. We must do as well as teach, for we will believe in him in the pulpit who for who will believe him in the pulpit who contradicts himself in his conversation. Therefore take heed to thyself and to thy doctrine. This is what Paul is saying. He said that we must exercise in our life. This is what's wrong with most people out there. You know, there'll be all kind of good Christians in church on Sunday and on Sunday night and on Wednesdays and during revival meetings, but to get them on the job and they act like everybody else out there. Something's wrong with that. I don't believe a true Christian is going to do that. You're not going to be a hypocrite. That's what the Bible said, teaching hypocrisy and lies, or lies and hypocrisy. Believing one thing and yet teaching something else. We're going to deal some more with these issues. I've still got these other verses I want to deal with. But you know what? In dealing with doctrine, we must know what we believe, but we must know why we believe it, and we must live according to what we know and understand. Oftentimes, we put away things because, well, I don't know everything about it. How many of you have bought a television or a VCR in the last 10 years? And when you brought that thing home, when you opened it up, you looked at it, and you said, you know what? I don't need this owner's manual. I know everything there is to know about this thing. And you began to look at that, the tedious job of having to read the instructions. And now, the instructions are not just a few pages. They're like this thick because they come in 14,000 different languages. Yeah. <laughs> We're in America. It ought to be written in America. Praise God. You know what? How many of us have a VCR that we know everything about that VCR? You know what you did? You looked in the instruction. You said, how to turn it on. How to set the clock. That's all I need. That's, that's it. Most of the time, the people will call you up. Hey, can you come help me with this? I'm trying to put this thing together. I have no idea what to do. You go over there and you look. they got pieces everywhere. And the instructions are way over there. Sit down. Start reading. We'll put this there. Now, I've done that before. I've gotten caught like that before. Take the instructions. I can put that together. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That's, That's it. it. That's quality extra parts. Oh, all kind of extra parts. Get the uh, needed parts. We can't have extra parts in our doctrine. We can't have extra parts in what we believe. We better know what we believe and why we believe it. And we better live it. Because I'm going to tell you something. I know this for a fact in my own life. The person that came to me to tell me about Jesus, I didn't believe them when I first saw them. But I watched them. And when they convinced me that they had something better than what I could ever imagine, I began to listen to them. That's how you're going to win somebody to do it. You need to put it in practice. And exercise what we say to do. 